Well, hey guys, the severe risk really going up for Wednesday across the central plain states, and I think we're facing a thump or bust situation here across Minnesota and Wisconsin when it comes to some heavy snow. It's actually, in, in my opinion, maybe looking a little more likely now. We're going to talk a little bit about that here in today's video. Thanks for coming by. If you're new to the channel, a lot of new folks subscribing. It's just blowing me away how you guys are just pushing this small channel up. So thank you so much for subscribing. If you've already subscribed, thanks for coming along and being a part of the channel. Give it a like, and thank you always uh, for your support. If you're new, I'm a former TV chief meteorologist. I've been out of that business for several years now, and now we're here on YouTube doing forecast updates. Look at this strong upper low. It is dropping some big snow here across the west. This storm is going to move east as we move through the overnight hours, and then it's going to bring our severe weather out here into the Plain States. And yes, I think we've got to watch parts of Minnesota, Minneapolis, St. Paul, east into parts of Wisconsin on the north side of this for some snow. The severe weather threat definitely much higher, and this right here will actually get in the way maybe of how fast our surface low pressure develops, and that ultimately will affect whether we see rain quickly flipping over to snow across Minnesota and Wisconsin. Will it happen? I think it's going to be really down to the wire here. Look at this. New data coming in, certainly saying that the severe weather element of this storm is looking worse here from parts of Kansas down into Oklahoma, specifically over into Missouri too, and even parts of Iowa. Not only are we dealing with the potential for some strong damaging winds, some really large hail, but we also have a decent tornado risk too. The Storm Prediction Center now has hashed this area out here into parts of eastern Kansas, north, even into parts of the very southeast corner of Nebraska, into parts of Iowa, east across central Missouri, and then down into Texas, too. It's not hashed out, but still a decent chance of seeing some tornadoes heading into the afternoon, but the highest risk will be right here in this area. Multiple factors at play here. We clearly have a cold front that's moving through. That's going to cause that lift, but we also have a lot of wind shear. That's change of wind direction with height. Winds aloft, kind of coming in out of the west, southwest here. At the surface, more of a southerly flow. So with that change of wind direction with height, we're going to get those storms that want to rotate, and that could lead to some tornadoes. Another thing that I always looked for, and you know we're seeing it here tonight showing up on the models, is this jet streak here that's swinging out of New Mexico into parts of Kansas. This is an area in the mid-levels where the wind is really going fast. Typically when you see these on the front right side of these, this is where... You get the most instability, and this is where the severe weather will be on the front right side of that. So it's no wonder we're looking here right in this area, right? The front right side of this jet streak that's kicking out of the southwest, and that's got some pretty good speed on it too. We're talking winds that could get over 100 knots at times in the mid-levels, and with all that rotation, again, remember at the surface, you've got your winds more coming in like this, aloft, everything going like this. Not only that, you've got speed shear. So as you go up in height, the wind speeds up even more, so that wants to to take those thunderstorms and rip them apart, continuing to allow them to billow up and also rotate. So that's why that tornado risk is certainly high here, again, from parts of Iowa down into Kansas and even over into Missouri as this all shifts to the east overnight. Those winds really get strong, strong cyclone genesis happening here as this storm moves to the north, and that's where our potential for some snow will start to be. Timing some of this out, low pressure, again, rapidly developing. There's your severe threat through the day on uh, Wednesday into Thursday. By Thursday morning, our low moving very close to southeast Minnesota into Wisconsin and the latest NAM model. And the NAM is notorious for trying to put down a big thump of snow, really trying to show it now for parts of Minnesota, from Minneapolis, St. Paul, east into parts of uh, western Wisconsin, northwest Wisconsin, and the UP of Michigan. Rain for the rest of Michigan and further south. Not a lot of rain, though. This really starts to fall apart, too, as we head uh, now into Friday. Sort of backing things up, we'll take a look at the snow here in just a moment because, again, a lot of different solutions. But let's time some of this severe weather out as we move through the day Wednesday. Once you get past lunchtime, all bets are off, right? So it'll start first up here into parts of southeast Nebraska, maybe even northern parts of Kansas. You're going to get these discrete or these supercells that get off by themselves in this environment. They're going to have a tendency to spin up and rotate. Those rotating up drafts are what's going to drive the tornadoes heading into the day Wednesday into Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening. The further south you go, these storms will start to cluster up, I think. But remember that that strong jet streak swinging through here, you've got this strong southerly flow out ahead of this. Winds again in the upper levels coming in like this. So everything coming together here for a decent severe weather day and evening. And I think even overnight into early Thursday morning, further east into Missouri, 
even into eastern Oklahoma. These may weaken some as we get into the early morning hours. I mean, they probably will. And now we are looking down into parts of the south, so into Louisiana, Mississippi, down into Alabama. How much is left over? Well, at this point, it doesn't look like a huge severe weather event uh, further south. But still, I think we could see some gusty winds, some hail as everything pushes off to the east. Maybe even some of that lingering again through those early morning hours uh, into Thursday as that front pushes off to the east. Now let's talk about the cold side of this storm. This is the afternoon European run. I want to show you this as we talk about this boom or bust here. Now, a lot of times when you get these strong developing cyclones, mid-latitude cyclones, we call them, or areas of low pressure, you get a lot of things happening. You get cold air wrapping in behind it, and you also get what we call dynamic cooling, where the storm literally causes its own pocket of cold air. And that's kind of what we've been seeing here on the latest European model. If I were to flip over to the NAM model, it is going crazy with the snow, trying to shift everything over to snow really fast. So a, a boom or a thump. Now, are we going to see this much snow? I, I honestly doubt it. The NAM model is trying to paint out this crazy boom of snow here across western Wisconsin, again, over into the Twin Cities with 8 to 12 inches of snow. Listen, you're probably seeing the maps out there on social media. There's going to be some strengthening of this storm, but there is some real big flux with this system, and that's because the positioning of the low, all of these things come together. And we're also looking at, again, those storms that are forming off to the south will play a part. Now, some of the discussion that was in the National Weather Service out of Minneapolis really talked about that. And they were talking about some a lot of forcing. Thermal profiles at the beginning of this are, are going to be pretty tough to squeeze out any snow with temperatures marginal. But as we start to see this larger scale cyclone genesis happening, this large area of low pressure is starting to develop. That, again, would be when we dynamically cool things. Sub-freezing temperatures start to develop as we cool the atmosphere dynamically as this area of low pressure deepens. And back to the west, some cold air starts to pull into this storm, too. And again, it, it all depends, too, on how much cold air can wrap into this system. Now, I'm just going to tell you, if we can get a rapidly developing area of low pressure on the south side of this, the NAM may actually be onto something. This is a little closer look at the NAM, and boom, it tries to really deepen that area of low pressure with a quick thump of banded snow somewhere across eastern Minnesota, western parts of Wisconsin, However, on the flip side, and the National Weather Service is talking about this too, large-scale convection, that's the th thunderstorms that are forming off to the south, could get in the way of this. Because if you get these thunderstorms forming, that's going to slow the rapidly developing low pressure. It's going to slow that down. The slower you make it, you're not going to get that dynamic cooling, and you're not going to get that thump of snow. This is literally a super high boom or bust potential because it's such a borderline event. And honestly, it's not that often that I look into the National Weather Service discussion and I read things like this. They say, quote, for this reason, the forecast carries a high degree of boom or bust potential. The eventual outcome will likely be somewhere in between with a the heavy banded snow they're talking about or maybe just kind of a bust. Let's go further east. Again, I showed you that precip falling apart. Temperatures, though, in the east will start to cool down some as we head into Friday. Friday morning, temperatures back into the uh, the 30s and 40s across a good chunk of the Ohio Valley in the northeast, even some 20s. And then as we head into the weekend, warmer temperatures start to prevail again across the south, even into parts of the Ohio Valley with southerly flow starting to develop here again. Do want to let you know what's going on in the tropics. Still, this area here across the Caribbean has about a 40% chance of development. The latest afternoon ensemble run still showing an area of low pressure developing here in the Caribbean. The trend is what I'm looking at is to bring this thing north wherever it is, whether it's here, here, or here, it's coming north. So because of that, I think that's an issue. So if you have a high here, it's driving things this way. That's a concern. And that's something worth watching over the next week or so if you have interest along the Gulf Coast, Florida, even the East Coast of the U.S., that's all I got for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you subscribe and come back if you've not, and I'll see you next time.